Gap year decision making is never easy, but there are some commonalities that I see when I'm talking to families. So on today's episode, I will share some of the most common barriers to choosing a gap year and some of the strongest reasons that we're seeing in 2021 for families to choose a gap year. I hope this is helpful and enjoy the episode. people sharing their stories, ideas, and experts diving deep into how you can make the right decisions in order to have a meaningful gap year. This is the place to be no matter where you are on your gap year journey. I'm Michelle Dittmer, your resident gap year expert. Let's jump right in. And welcome to the Gap Year Podcast. My name is Michelle Dittmer, and I am your host and Gap Year expert. Today, I am going to be sharing with you what I've been hearing over the last couple of months uh, from families who are exploring the idea of a gap year. I'm going to share with you uh, some of the reasons why folks are a little bit scared to engage in the gap year experience, and I'm going to share with you some of the reasons why what are really tipping the scales so that families are jumping on board with this idea. And I hope that this gives you a little bit of clarity. Some of these ideas might really resonate with you, might be what you're feeling, and maybe I'll give you a little bit of reassurance that the gap year pathway could be the right thing for you. So let's start off with some of the things that are getting in the way of families choosing the gap year pathway. Now, the first thing that I hear all the time is that folks don't want to waste their time. Let's be honest about what happened in 2020 and what 2021 is starting to shape up to be is it's almost a write-off. It feels almost like 2020 may as well have not happened at all and that grade 12 just kind of slipped by without anything really memorable and that fear of having another year like that can be very daunting. So let's just get on with it already. Let's just move forward. Let's just get into the next phase of our lives and let's just push past this. Um, So let's start university because that feels like a new chapter and that feels like progress, something that we may have, I don't know if if you're feeling like I am, but we may feel like we haven't seen progress. And so jumping into higher education might be that pacifier or that thing that feels like progress um, and might be a marker of moving forward. And so they really don't want to take that intentional time because they're scared it might be a wasted time. Um, And I can tell you for sure, you can ask any one of of the alum who have taken a gap year, the words that always come out are best decision ever, that it shaped who I am, it gave me clarity on my future, the things that people on a gap year learn, the people they meet, the experiences that they have become lasting skills and friendships and memories that really shape who they are as a person. So never ever in my career of over 10 years of working with anybody has anybody told me their gap year was a waste of time. Um, Really, it's a time of exploration and growth and a time to to discover a little bit more about what direction you should be heading on to. Um, And the studies show that that actually people who do take a gap year, they develop all of these skills that all of the employers right now are saying are lacking in uh, university and college graduates. All of those people skills, soft skills, transferable skills, uh, 21st century skills, whatever you want to call them, this is a really great time to develop them to partner with the education that's going to come later. So while people are scared of this idea of wasted time, I can reassure you that that is not something that's going to happen, that it is a very, very meaningful time. 
The second thing that I'm hearing from families and from young people themselves is that they're scared of falling behind. And we're all caught up in this race of moving forward and looking for different things to happen and different milestones to hit. So while you watch a lot of your peers, because let's face it, that's the direction that most people go, while you watch them moving forward and signing up and choosing their university or college, and it, it feels like they're moving forward and and maybe you might feel a little bit stagnated or a little bit stuck and you're not um, going to be racking up the credits to put on your transcript in the same way. And again, very, very real feeling. Um, and I can definitely say, I've said it before, but it takes a boldness to stand up to the status quo and to question that socially defined pathway and for you to stand up and to do something different. So, Definitely, it's real, and that peer pressure, that social pressure to move forward can feel almost overwhelming and can, can cloud the way that we're, we're heading forward. But when you look at the data and you actually look at students who pushed pause, took a gap year, got some clarity, had some meaningful experiences, and decided on which direction they wanted to head – those students actually finish their undergrads on average in fewer years because they're making a better choice. Rather than just stumbling blindly forward and switching majors three or four times, they actually make a better choice right out of the gate. So in terms of falling behind, in some cases, you can actually be leapfrogging in front of your peers um, and, and moving forward. Now, the third thing, and this is maybe one of the biggest reasons that people choose not to take a gap year, is because they don't know what they can do. They actually just can't imagine or can't fathom not being a student. And that goes for parents looking at their kid and the kid looking at themselves and just not being able to imagine what something different might be. We, as a society, we kind of see this pathway where we move from high school student to post-secondary student to employed. Um, and anything that doesn't fit in that mold is a little bit scary and a little bit different. Um, and it's often a barrier because when people are comparing what their post-secondary options are, they take this known entity of going on to university where it's defined, that's what society says we should do, and that's it's very known and comfortable. And what they compare it to is they compare it to this empty year of nothing. And that is a big mistake to actually compare those two things because you're not comparing apples to apples. We know university consists of classes and tutorials and lectures. Um, but when you're looking at your gap year, if you don't know what that equivalent is, you can't make a balanced judgment. So I really, really encourage you to get out there and to explore what the alternative is. What could you do on a gap year? Where might you work? Where where might you volunteer? What types of skills are you going to develop? Would you like to learn a language or learn an instrument? Would you like to start a business? Um, would you like to earn some credits? Would you like to engage in a formal gap year program? Would you like to do some personal development? All of those things are really rich and meaty things. And when you're comparing courses and tutorials to all of those things, you can make a better decision about which of those is the right thing for you. So if you're considering a gap year, I really, really encourage you to do some research and to really think hard about what you might fill that year with because there are such incredible things. Now, if you do need some support in figuring that out or exploring that a little bit, you can always book a call with me. Just head to cangap.ca slash call and uh, you can book a free half hour session and we can chat through what some of your options are uh, because it can be a little bit overwhelming. Now, while those are the top three things that I hear that are getting in the way, um, I wanted to also share the four things that are coming up for, for kind of tipping the scales in the pro gap year direction, because I think it's important that we, we know what's happening around us and we can understand that these things are normal and these are things that other people are experiencing and the gap year might be the solution to address some of these reasons. So the number one thing that's coming up this year is mental health. 
we have been put through the ringer as families, as individuals, and as young people over the last year. We have seen so much stress. We have seen, we've been asked to do things in ways that are uncomfortable, that are different, that are hard, and our mental health has definitely taken a toll. Uh, The amount of conversations I have with young people who talk about being stressed out or burnt out, or unmotivated, um, disconnected, and having having this sense of loss for their grade 12 year. Um, it's really quite unbelievable how much of a toll this is taking on us. And so a lot of families are deciding, you know what, this mental health thing is real. And instead of creating a situation where we are going to ask our young person to shoulder the weight of academic pressures now we're paying thousands of dollars for, um, instead of putting all those additional pressures, let's give them some time and some space to figure it out, um, to take care of their mental health, to try something, to get excited about something again. I I just, I'm, that's what I want for, for gappers is to be excited about something um, and want them to really feel feel good about things rather than feeling stressed. So mental health without a doubt is number one. The second reason folks are opting for taking a gap year is the exhaustion with online schooling. Um, It has been tremendously clear that students are, for the most part, not excelling academically or socially with so much of school being online uh, or being restricted in certain ways, that it is really a challenge. And we had all hoped that this virus would be long gone by now, but I think we're all really finally wrapping our heads around the idea that this virus is going to be around for a while. As we get word of this vaccine and we're excited about it, we're starting to also come to terms with the fact that you can't vaccinate our entire population uh, in the matter of weeks. So this rollout is going to be slow and this virus is going to affect our lives for quite quite a while now. And so people are concerned that next year's classes will also have a virtual nature to them. So rather than subscribing to online Zoom U, they are looking at pushing pause and um, giving this virus some time to just get the heck out of here. We're tired of it. Um, Let's make some space and some time for that to happen so that when we do engage in post-secondary, we're going to have a little bit more of that traditional experience and in-person experience because it will come. Might not feel like it, but it will come. So there we go. We got mental health, Zoom fatigue, and the next one is kind of a double pronger. It's all about value. And value has two senses. Value is what we value as a as a person. What are the things that we place value on? And the second is value, like a monetary value. And both of these things are true when I talk to families. One of them is that intrinsic value, that human value. Families have discovered over the last year the value of experiential learning. And especially at the beginning of the pandemic, families were talking a lot about how much young people were learning about life skills, all of those real tangible things that help them in a day-to-day setting more than just balancing quadratic or balancing chemical equations or the quadratic equation or whatever they happen to be studying in school, um, which is value valuable. I have a science degree. I'm not knocking that, but also understanding the value in life experience and how much that is um, something that we need to place more emphasis on is providing opportunities to get that hands-on experience so we can build those adulting skills or those life skills that are going to help us to be successful as we uh, grow and learn and move into adulthood. 
So really important there. Now, the second interpretation is really talking about the dollar value. And this comes back to what post-secondary is going to look like next year is with tuition fees remaining the same as they always were. Um, is there that same monetary value if schooling will be online or if they will not have access to tutorials or labs in the same way or those hands on experiences? So the value comes two prong there. So personal value values, uh, as well as the monetary values. And then the last point I want to share with you guys today is folks are often taking a pause because they recognize how much more schooling lies ahead of them. So if you think simply about undergrad, that's another four years. That's a whole other high school. That's a whole other grade 9, 10, 11, 12. That's a long time. Um, and if we get a lot of people coming to us, say, not only looking at their undergrad, but saying, you know what, I also want to go on to law school or med school, or I'd like to get my PhD. Now we're talking about two or three more high schools altogether. And so these students are saying, you know what, I need to recharge my batteries so that I can be good at being a student again. Right now, I need to flex some other muscles and I need to get ready for that next stage. But I need to I need to do something different for a year so that I know that I will be successful when I go back to being a student. So really recharging that exhausted brain and making space for something different for a little while. So I hope that was helpful. This is what I'm hearing in all these conversations that I'm having. And I hope that for you, it validates some of the things that are going on for you and provides you with some tools to think about when you are exploring your post-secondary pathways. Now, as I mentioned before, if you do want some, some additional support, I am always around to help you. And don't hesitate to book that call with me at cangap.ca slash call. It's a really great way to get some perspective and to uh, to have a conversation with somebody who can share with you what the alternative might look like. Now, CanGap is a nonprofit. I am not going to make any more or less money. I am not in the business of convincing you or um, manipulating you to tell you that a gap year is a good idea. I'm simply here to provide you with the resources so that you can make the decision that is best for your family. So if you do want additional support in that conversation, I am always here to help out. So until next time, my friends, be well, be safe, and keep on adventuring. Thank you.